Now, crested geckos are one of the easiest reptiles to breed out there. Of course, pretty easy game to pair up to pretty much get the job done without any intervention. Uh, incubating eggs seems to be pretty easy. Room temperature for somewhere around that 70 to 90 days, and then you hatch out these cute little babies. I mean, all in all, what could be easier? And now, while I do believe that there isn't that much as far as difficulties go with crested geckos, there are definitely a few things you need to look out for when breeding and caring for the baby crested geckos, and definitely some health for concerns and all, all some tips and tricks that'll help make sure that you're crested geckos make it from out of the egg to a thriving baby that you can then sell. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Just some tips and tricks when it comes to breeding crested geckos, how to make sure you have a 100% hatch rate, 100% good laying, and 100% thriving babies. I think so far in the top of my head, I believe I have four, maybe five tips or tricks. Uh, two of them are going to be for the adults, and then two of them are going to be for the babies, and one of them is going to be for the eggs if I decide to keep that in there. So let's get out of this chair, let's check out some crested geckos, and let's give you guys the crested gecko tips. And before we get started with this video, of course, we've got to ask that wonderful, incredible question of the day. And that question of the day is going to be, what is your favorite crested gecko morph? I know there's a variety out there, lavenders, tricolors, harlequin, quad stripes, tigers, dalmatians, anything like that. But I want to hear your favorite one. Drop one in the comment right now. And then also, if you guys are new to the channel, if you don't mind doing me a huge favor and going down there, hit that subscribe button. We are on the road to 100,000. Your boy really wants that silver play button. Let's do it. Okay, let's get into the video. Video. Kicking off this video, we are going to be having Pebbles the Chungus helping us out here today, which I mean, Jesus Christ, Chungus indeed. That's a big gecko right there, folks. <laughs> First thing you definitely need to look out for when it comes to breeding crested geckos is going to be number one, calcium crashing. Now, calcium crashing is going to be the inhibited fact that when a crested gecko does not have enough calcium reserves in order to produce those eggs, is going to deplete those reserves, and pretty much a bunch of bad stuff is going to happen. Now, pretty much when you have calcium crashing with crested geckos, not only are you gonna get bad eggs, the gecko's not gonna have enough calcium to get those eggs nice and calcified, those pearly whites, as we like to say, and the eggs are just gonna be bad. They're not gonna be fertile, you're gonna lose out on that clutch of eggs, but more importantly, the gecko's health is gonna be at risk. Uh, crested geckos with calcium crashing really is not a good thing. It can be potentially fatal, and it's definitely something you need to look out for when you're breeding crested geckos. Biggest and clearest sign when it comes to calcium crashing with crested geckos is going to be the shakes. Uh, crested gecko seems to have some like twitching in the back legs and the front legs you'll see it's kind of like uh, pretty much actually what my hands usually do this I, this is just involuntary uh, you, you'll notice in the vlogs I, I do this it's because my hands always shake crested geckos are gonna be doing that same thing that's gonna be a clear sign that your crested gecko is gonna be calcium crashing and it definitely needs some added supplementation with the diet a sure way to make sure your crested gecko is having a uh, correct calcium level is going to be checking the calcium sacs now I'm not gonna do it with cookie it's it'll be difficult doing this with one person here's a little picture if you open up the mouth you can see uh, pretty much in the back of the throat they're gonna be two little sac areas and if they're good they're going to be nice and white like this picture right here if they're depleted uh, full as well I should mention that they're going to look kind of like empty sacs which is not a good thing again you're going to want to be supplementing some added calcium to make sure your crested gecko is getting all the minerals and nutrients that it needs. Now there are a couple of ways you can go about serving calcium to your crested gecko uh, number one is getting the proper diet if you are breeding crested geckos I highly recommend Pangea's uh, breeder and growth formula it's the gray bag I'll put a little picture right here of it uh, that's going to make sure it actually has beneficial extra fat and extra calcium for the crested geckos to make sure that if they are laying, they're going to be able to utilize that again, extra fat, extra calcium, but a bit of a boost in the vitamins and minerals to make sure they have everything they need in order to lay those eggs. However, if you cannot find the growth and breeder formula in your local pet store or on Amazon, which I would find mighty surprising because it's on, it's on Amazon, but hey, maybe that's not the case. I would recommend supplementing with some calcium without D3. Uh, this is the ZooMed one. I have a couple of different ones, RepCal, things like that. I don't think it like too, too matters what the brand is, but there's a couple of them. I think Rapashi is the best calcium, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, you can supplement with some extra calcium, just shaking a little bit and stirring it within the food. It does give the food a little bit of a different texture and consistency, so that's a bit odd. And you just want to make sure you're not overdoing it as well. Don't put a pound, like, it, it's not a one-in-one -one mixture of calcium and crusted gecko food to where you have, like, this powdery, uh, like, dehydrated formula-type stuff. Uh, you can overdo it with the calcium with crusted geckos, and then you're going to get calcium poisoning, calcium toxicity, which is, again, not a good thing as well. You can go too up just as much you can go too low when it comes to calcium for crusted geckos. So, pretty much a nice aim line, a couple shakes in there, stir it up. Uh, pretty much I always vote up for the Pangea, the special blend, because uh, the guys at Pangea probably know a lot more how to do it than me, so I'll let them work with the science of what the exact formula is for a calcium.
calcium ratio for a breeding crested gecko and take the guesswork out for myself and not risk again that calcium toxification. Alrighty, new topic, new gecko. Let's bring out somebody else. You go back into here and then I'm gonna close you up and then I'm gonna grab you because you're really cute. Now this here is Xena. She is one of my Super Dell breeders, uh, my Super Dell Tiger. Just a beautiful little girl. Fired down, of course, but still looking spunky and incredible as usual. Uh, here's the thing with Xena. She's going to help us out with our neck topic, which is going to be crested geckos that don't lay their eggs where you want them to. You always want to stay vigilant when it comes to crested geckos laying their eggs. There are a couple different ways you can go about uh, putting some laying uh, substrate or medium in there for the crested geckos to lay on. You, of course, can do the entire enclosure with substrate itself. I did that for a little bit. However, here's a bit of a pro tip or a bonus tip for you. I actually found that superworms managed to make their way into the bin, lay eggs and babies into the substrate itself without me realizing because, you know, the baby superworms are like that big. They look like little just microscopic, a uh, little almost like tapeworms, but you know, they look like superworms. Um, those were actually eating my eggs. So I would find the eggs, they'd be infertile because the superworms would have burrowed into this, the uh, egg and uh, dried it out, not good stuff. So I actually opted for using lay boxes myself just because I don't want that to happen again. Uh, I had a whole year where my crested geckos just had no fertility with the eggs because superworms kept eating them. Now I won't get too much in how to make a lay box, I went on an in-depth video right there if you guys want to take a look at that, but with Crested Gecko's laying, you always want to stay vigilant. These guys are not the smartest tool in the shed when it comes to Crested Geckos. I, I can assure you, they're not, they're not working with a full deck if you, um, if you're understanding my euphemisms. They're, uh, listen, does this look like an animal that has it all together? Come on, come on. Ah, oh, there's that shaking again. I, I can't stop. I'm sorry. Yes, crested geckos are not very smart. That is what I'm getting at here. Uh, I have a crested geckos lay in just uh, awful places. You got the lay box with a nice moistened uh, peat moss, uh, it's sphagnum moss, anything you want to put in there. And it, all in all, it, perfect. Just 100%. Oh, the perfection where it comes to a nice den for a crested ge gecko to lay. No. No, they don't decide to do that. Underneath the paper towels, that's where that's where they want to lay. Or you have Xena here, which hang on, let me let me move this one back. So we have uh Let me uh get down a little bit. Down, down. Okay, there we go. Alright, so we have Xena uh, in this bin, pebbles in this bin. Now I don't know how or why, but Xena kept escaping out of her bin and every time, three separate times within a span of uh, four or five weeks, uh, Xena would get out of her bin, go into Pebbles bins and lay her eggs inside of Pebbles bins. And then I wouldn't realize it and of course they'd be bad eggs because Pebbles isn't a laying animal. Obviously if you guys saw she had an FTS. Don't want to breed an FTS animal so she's just a pet right now. And yeah, so I, I don't moisten the substrate as much as I need to because of the fact is there, there's no need to because she's not laying eggs. And then I would find again clutch after clutch bad eggs in there. Just uh... Ugh. Just one of those things. That's gotta be one of my biggest tips when it comes to crested geckos and egg laying. Make sure you stay vigilant. You can have the perfect lay box in there, the best lay box you've seen from this side of the Mississippi. However, that is no match for the two brain cells bonking around in these things' skulls, because I'll lay them anywhere. So just make sure when you realize your crested gecko, you know, just shows a rabbit and she's gonna be possibly laying suit. Just stay a little vigilant, maybe check around every now and then. Make sure she's laying where she wants to, make sure she's actually digging in the lay box and not like underneath the paper towels, because if that's the case, 10 out of 10, the animal's gonna lay under there and you're gonna get a bad set of eggs. Okie dokie folks, we went over some uh, Crested Gecko adult tips and tricks how to make sure you guys, your adults are breeding, making sure everything's okay. However, let's get into the next topic at hand, which is gonna be, well, the next stage of this, and that's gonna be caring for the eggs. This is gonna be a bit more of a, a quick tip in here for Crested Gecko eggs, cause I mean, let's be honest, Crested Gecko eggs are so easy to hatch, like unbelievably easy. You get the right medium, like I enjoy using Pangea Super Hatch and you wait 60 days and they hatch out, Boom. But one tip I do have to give is use some sort of incubation method. Now, you don't need to go as far as something like this sea serpents incubator, you know. You don't need to draw, knock out $500 on an incubator for crested geckos, but I do like using crested gecko incubators. Personally, for me, I made a little DIY right here. It's literally a cooler with a thermostat plugged into it. Now, this is gonna be good for a couple of reasons. Number one, 
things change in your house. Things, some things get cooler, some things get warmer during the seasons. You don't want the crested geckos to be exposed to those harsh temperature drops, if there are any. Uh, for instance, here in New England, it gets really cold. It's really hot during the day and then really cold at night. Like literally we'll go from like 86 to 62 degrees from day and night and that's gonna influence the house. Lucky for me, I got a little cooler that I put some crested geckos in, cost me like $50, something like that. <clears throat> And that's about it. Now they're good. You don't have to worry about it. You got the thing heating it up, making sure it's set at that distinctly 74 degrees. So there's no worse issue and no worry with crested geckos having that temperature fluctuating because with inside, you're creating a little microclimate that the crested gecko needs 100% perfectly for the eggs to hatch. All right, all right, all right. I think I have blabbed on a little too much. This video is getting a little bit too long. Let's talk about some babies. Uh, funny enough, these are, I'm gonna try to make these a bit shorter when they're the main reason why I wanted to make this video. And that's gonna be Crested Gecko Baby Care, the most difficult part about raising and breeding Crested Geckos. Uh, tip number one, getting Crested Geckos to eat. Now, boy oh boy, if we thought the adult Crested Geckos were a little, uh hollow in the head, if you if you know what I'm saying. I think they're a little bit dumb. Baby crested geckos. Adult crested geckos have two brain cells. Baby crested geckos have one brain cell. That's how you do the math on that. Firstly, for me, this is what I do with all of my crested geckos. I want to make sure they're eating. I want to make sure I don't lose a baby because I was too lazy the fact to just plopping some food on the gecko's nose in order to get it to eat and kind of like stimulate that appetite for him to go hunting for that food rather than just leaving it up to chance and be saying, oh, you know, maybe I'll take the food out. Maybe you won't. And you just wasted, how long is that? Six weeks plus 90 days. Uh, that's a lot of weeks. And then your crested gecko dies because you didn't just do a little bit extra care for it. Now it's real easy if you only got a few. I'm starting to get a little bit where it's starting to become a pain in the ass. We're about halfway through the season. I've got 10 geckos so far. We got some over here, some over there as well. I don't want to stack them too high, which is the reason I have, they're like kind of separate. We got a lot of crested geckos. We still got a lot of eggs, Kelvin. So I don't know, with 30 crested geckos, this might become more of a hassle. However, it's a really easy thing to do. During feeding time, just get the crested gecko out. I know they're going to be squirmy. Uh, personally for me, I just applied the slightest bit of pressure against uh, pretty much a hold on them. So just on the back of the neck, just to make sure they don't squirm off. Make sure you don't apply too much pressure or else they might drop their tail because they'd be a little bit too scared. But I've noticed usually if you're going from the front, not the back, they usually don't drop their tail due to that. Uh, then what you want to do is just get the crested gecko in that little pin hold we got, get a dollop on your finger from the food bowl and just boop right on the nose and then it's good to go. That's all you got to do. Then you put the crested gecko back, it licks the food off its nose or it's wherever you put it and just like put it in like this area right here. Uh, you put the guest crested gecko on there, it eats, it gets a little bit of that stimulate going, that appetite's being stimulated, it's getting at least a little bit of nutritional value and food in it if it weren't because it wasn't hunting or searching out for that food. And then that's gonna make the crested gecko a little bit of an easier time going for that food in of itself. Right, folks, the last tip at hand and probably the most important, the number one reason why I wanted to actually make this video, that's gonna be the last tip of the day for crested geckos and that's going to be stuck toes and stuck shed. I have no idea what it is about the crested geckos, but their toes always get stuck. It doesn't matter. Correct humidity. Nice, uh, nice dampness without too much going on. You got the nice plants in there to make sure that they can get the shed off. Something hard for them to brush up against too. Doesn't matter. Their toes, the toes always get stuck, folks. I, I don't know why. And that is going to be a real issue if not uh, uh, treated. If you're not actually paying attention to that, you're just letting them do whatever. A couple of sheds on there is going to cut off the circulation within the toes and you're gonna have to either amputate the toes because they're gonna decrease and become just neurotic black messes or they're pretty much just gonna fall off on their own that's not something you want man you, we're raising crested geckos we want the babies to be as awesome and healthy as they can be and letting toe shed get to something as simple as letting toe shed get too far to the fact that then your crested gecko has to lose toes over it now, come on we, we're not doing that here now again, it's going to be a little bit difficult just because of the fact that crested geckos are squirmy little things. Baby crested geckos are the squirmiest baby reptile I have ever seen. And they're like this big. So it does make it a little bit difficult. Uh, some tools of the trade I personally use, it's just a wet Q-tip and maybe one of those, uh, what are they, the toothpicks, the little floss toothpicks. They have the little sharp end. Uh, pretty much what you want to do with this is get your crested gecko, again, that, that slight little pin hold, making sure you restrain them just enough to get the job done. Uh, what I do is I then moisten the toothpicks get it nice and moist moisten it moist you want uncomfortable yet 
At that point, I take the toe, get that skin shed nice and moist, and I take my toothpick in very carefully because the toothpicks are a little sharp. You don't want to stab or hurt your animal. That will definitely be a cause to inhibit a tail drop if the crested gecko is feeling pain. So what you want to do is then get the little toothpick, and I like to go right in between the toes and kind of try to scrape that off, getting in little pieces with your fingers. Your fingers are too big. You're not going to be able to do it, so you got to use the tools of the trade. Maybe something like tweezers as well would work, but I find just a little toothpick in between the toes and just kind of rolling it out, rolling out the moist toe skin. Still doing that, it takes about five, six, seven minutes, maybe a little bit less if you're good at it, you know. And that's gonna be it. Now your crested gecko has some nice toes. This doesn't happen forever. I find as they get older, I, I don't know if they like eat the, the skin better, they like eat their shed better, or maybe they're just like not as stupid. I don't know what the issue is. However, what I can tell you as babies, this is a constant issue I've been dealing with for years. And as they get just a little bit older, even within that probably like four or five month range, I usually don't have to do it anymore. But with the, these babies, I'm constantly getting the tools out, moistening that skin and getting it off. Alrighty folks, there you have it. Now we got a bunch of stuff that you know how to breed and raise Crested Gecko Babies just a little bit easier, making your life a little bit more pleasant than what it would have been if you didn't follow these tips or didn't watch this video. I think that deserves a big old thumbs up button if I do. If I do say so myself. Well guys, as always, thank you so much for taking this journey I like to call DBCB Exotics and just taking the time out of day to watch these just beautifully cinematic masterpieces. <laughs> That's gonna wrap it up for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow, but until then, goodbye.